Good evening. Now, I am, to be fair, a little bit of a maths nerd, but I cannot be the only person in this room who has noticed that numbers make sense. If you have one and a half meters, 1.5 meters, that is one meter, 50 centimeters. If you have 1.5 liters, it's one liter, 500 milliliters. If you have 1.5 days, it's one day, five hours, except for it's not, and it tears me up inside. <laughs> so I need someone to blame this on, and like a good British man I am, I'm going to blame the French. <laughs> and in order to do that, we need to go back to 18th century Europe. As you can see, it's a mess. The Germans are killing the Austrians. The Austrians are killing the French. The French are killing the French. Can you hear the people sing? And as you can see, the North Sea is on fire of places. It's a mess. But this is not the worst that is about in 18th century Europe. No. Murder, wars, the sea being on fire is nothing compared to just trying to buy a pound or a kilogram of bananas or meat or carrots. Not just because kilograms haven't been invented yet, but because every single different place has its own system of measurements. I'm not just talking countries, but in France alone, there are over 1,000 400 different ways of measuring. Just put that into context. You're going to the supermarket and you want to buy some food. And they say, what would you like? How much would you want? And you have no idea what those measurements are at all. Now imagine doing that across whole countries. Supply chains are a mess. And nothing gets done. So. A group of French people got together and decided this is unacceptable. We cannot have this. Let's unify everything. So they decided, seeing as we count in base 10, we count in tens, hundreds, thousands, that they would set up a system of measurements which go in tens, hundreds, thousands. And it was fantastic. And no one listened to them. No one. No one listens to mathematicians until it's too late. And then a man called Napoleon came along in revolutionary France. And he said, this is a great idea. Let's go with this. And then France stopped killing themselves and started invading pretty much all of Europe, spreading their ideas as they went. Ideas such as this metric decimal system of measurements and also driving on the wrong side of the road. But today is about the measurements. And this went on, this continental system went on, and the rest of Europe started using this decimal metric system of measurements. And then Britain got involved and said, we can't have another country invading and occupying other countries. That's our job. So we came in, and we put the French back in France. But the ideas remained, and from that time onwards, Europe has used the metric system and driven on the wrong side of the road. But they've used the metric system and that has spread through across the world. So why no metric decimal time? The answer is there was. There was a decimal time introduced alongside kilograms, alongside kilometers, alongside liters. But it didn't stick. And the reason for that is the Catholic Church. Because it wasn't just decimal hours, decimal minutes, decimal seconds, but the entire calendar was changed. The entire calendar. There were 10 days in a week, three weeks in a month, 12 months in a year, and a couple of days for partying at the end of the year. And that messed up the services for the Catholic Church because God created the earth 
in, seven day, in six days and rested on the seventh. Sunday is the day that we worship every seven days, not ten days, every seven days. So the Catholic Church in France kept their calendar. And so the people of France had a choice. Either stick with the decimal calendar or stick with the Christian calendar. And they stuck with the church. And metric time, decimal time, was left by the wayside. So in order to create a world in which time is kept decimal and is much simpler to work with time, all we need to do is change that one thing and say that France kept a decimal calendar. And what effect would that have on the world? Having 10 hours per day, 100 minutes per hour, 100 seconds per minute. First of all, it would change our units of measurement. An hour would be 2.4 times longer than it is currently because there's 10 of them in a day. Our minutes would become 1.14 times longer. And our seconds would become 14% shorter. And this has interesting impacts across everything we do. Not just the fact that we don't have to spend so many maths lessons. And as a maths teacher, this is a bugbear. Teaching how to add time onto time. It will become just like adding decimals. Much, much simpler. Much less frustrating. But also, in this room, who here loves football? That's quite a few hands there. Football would be affected. A game of football is 90 minutes. There's nothing special about 90 minutes. It's not the peak time of performance for an athlete. I can't run for 90 minutes. I doubt most people in this room can. I can barely run for five. 90 minutes is the length of a game of football because it's a nice round number. It's an hour and a half. But an hour and a half in decimal time would become 79 minutes. That's not a nice round number. Possibly it would be changed to make it a round number. 75 minutes, three quarters of a new hour. That makes a game of football slightly shorter. Manchester United might have won quite a lot less without that Fergie time at the end. Maybe you can run a little bit faster at the start. Maybe there will be fewer injuries. We don't know. If it's affecting football like this, it's bound to affect other things, such as TV. Now, TV, most of our programs are 30 minutes long, or 20 minutes with 10 minutes of adverts for pharmaceutical products. But 30 minutes, again, is not anything special. It's not our attention span. Any teachers in this room could say that for definite. But it's just a nice round number. It's half of an hour. 30 minutes in decimal time will become 27 new minutes. That's not a nice round number. Possibly change it to a quarter of an hour, 25 minutes. 25 minutes is shorter. We've lost some of our time. Now, I was a big fan of games. I felt the last season was a little bit rushed. Very disappointing. Imagine how disappointing it would be if it was even more rushed because every time slot on TV is slightly shorter. So it has these effects across everything that we do because our current world, our current community, our current civilization is based upon these concepts that have been built over time. If we change those concepts, so much that we don't realize would change. But why 10? There is nothing special about the number 10, really. The reason we count in tens, hundreds, and thousands is quite simple and a little bit ridiculous. Hold up your hands, both hands. Most people in this room probably have 10 fingers. Most people. 
That is the only reason we count in ten, tens and hundreds. Ten is a fantastic number for multiplying because of that. But it is terrible for dividing. Ten has next to no factors. You can divide ten by one, two, five, and ten. It makes things really, really difficult when dividing. Twelve, however, you can divide by one, two, three, four, six, and twelve. By changing our base that we count in just a little bit, we could introduce such easier divisions. So, what I'm saying is decimal time would be fantastic, but changing every single thing might be a bit better, if a little harder. But a heart, what makes me cry is the inconsistency. The inconsistency. Why do we go tens in one way and then 12, 60s and 24s in the other? For me, it makes my heart bleed. I'm passionate about maths. I love my numbers. And people are messing about with it, making up random things. So I want every single person in this room to join with me now and make one demand. It is time for us, the people, to rise up and demand from our governments what we deserve. And that is decimal time for the world. Who is with me? Thank you.